Hello, this is Away from Voivod, and you're watching Agorophobic News. Hey, hey, Milos here of Agorophobic News, uh, sitting with Mr. Away of Voivod. Hello, sir. Hello, how are you? Fine, you? I'm great, thanks. <laughs> First time here, so. <laughs> are you super excited about it? Yeah, we're very excited. Um, especially that uh, it's sold out, so actually this tour has been sold out so far, so we're very happy. Yeah, that's, that's cool to know. <laughs> yeah, it's good for us. <laughs> and you know, there is like a historical region of Serbia, which is called Vojvodina. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and um, also um, uh, here it's a duke, I think, a Vojvod, yeah. yeah. And it's the title, I mean, like a general, or leader, or whatever. In uh, many uh, eastern countries um, uh, in Europe, um, there, there are voivods, either uh, generals or uh, chief of police or, depend or a high rank uh, politician, uh, depending on the country. It's, uh, it's great. But, but I picked it up in the book Dracula. So, uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, so uh, tomorrow we go to Romania for the, to play for the first time. We are very excited to. We want to go to the Dracula's castle. Yeah, it's cool. And uh, uh, by the way, can you explain the concept of Voivod? Uh, because you, it's uh, connected with Dracula and uh, nuclear vampire, whatever. Well, it's, um, I would say, a mixture of um, like Dracula, Lord of the Rings, uh, and um, fear of nuclear war from the Cold War era. And uh, so it's like a nuclear vampire, <laughs> and, uh, and I, I created that to uh, be a um, comic book artist when I was a kid. I created the concept because I was a fan of the magazine called Heavy Metal. So Philippe Drouillet, Moebius, they were my heroes, and I wanted to do something like that. So I created a world called Morgoth, uh, where the Voivod was protecting the planet uh, against uh, invaders and there were many planets with many voivods spread out through galaxies and so uh, so that's that was the main concept and when we formed the band I uh, explained that to the guys and uh, they agreed to put it into music which is great it's what we did uh, for all the 80s uh, period yeah. and how come did he defend the world uh, with nuclear stuff <laughs> <laughs> well, the, um, not only nuclear stuff. Uh, the uh, as the um, uh, it's um, uh, uh, a defensive uh, move, but um, also sometimes offensive. Uh, uh, but with high-tech weaponry and uh, the technology on the albums are um, was improving, like uh, in the real world, you know. And uh, uh, it's uh, I, I must say that uh, Voivod is not a hero, in the sense that. Um, on uh, some albums like Roar, Korgul is a mutation of Voivod. He pretty much represents the oppression, oppression, uh, oppressor, um, or uh, dark side. Is a uh, is um, uh, like uh, some 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 in a way some sort of dictator, you know. And uh, so it's not a hero, uh, and uh, it's just a way for us to express a point of view um, about this planet. So um, uh, uh, where um, we are definitely not. Uh, trying to promote war or anything like that. <laughs> it's definitely a message um, that comes from what we were listening to uh, back then, hardcore music and uh, conflict and discharge and yeah. Uh, and can you explain uh, all the chapters of, uh, I mean, uh, whole first five albums are like these chapters plus uh, Phobos. Can you go through all the chapters and explain? Yeah, to, um, um, on the first album, uh, the Voivod is some sort of uh, cybernetic vampire, half flesh and bones, half mechanical. But on on, uh, on Roar, uh, he's um, uh, bec become fully uh, robotic um, under the form of Korgul, some sort of a tank, really. Like a technodrome. Yeah, and, uh, and uh, of course there were many influences back then, uh, like Mad Max and you know, like the early cyberpunk movies, uh, and uh, but um, and then um, on the third album, the Voivod uh, on Kinetic Technology, he goes into space to conquer more territory, and then because uh, even though at the origin of the concept he's defending against uh, invaders, at one point he becomes an invader himself and uh, to uh, expand his territory, and uh, so uh, and on the Dimension Atlas. 
he creates a new dimension, goes into it, and then at the end destroys it. Uh, and um, uh, sort of a failed experiment uh, representing our world. You know. And uh, not that I think the Earth should be destroyed, but um, let's say that... We're leading toward that. It's, uh, it's, um, it's something that man will do to uh, himself, is destroy his own boat. <laughs> And, and um, so, um, uh, on the, in, um, after destroying his uh, micro galaxy on Dimension Atlas, uh, he um, goes uh, into his brain on Nothing Face uh, to explore other realms of reality. And uh, so, uh, that's pretty much the first five uh, chapter. We, we did write a sixth chapter for uh, Phobos and then a seventh chapter for a lost album that we only demoed uh, in 2000. Four. Is it four? 2004? Uh, 2000. In 2000, we did demos with Eric Forrest for the final chapter. And we never recorded, the band split up, and we never recorded uh, the full album, we just did demos. It exists under the form of uh, demos. And what's the idea behind Phobos? Uh, well, Phobos, um, it's, it's uh, more like a, a collection of uh, conspiracy theories that, um, was, uh, that were going around the early ages of internet, really, uh, with uh, like a heart project, and, but it's um, uh, the fight, uh, the war between Anarch and Demok, and Anarch is an anarchist and Demok is more into a democracy type and uh, so uh, it's sort of a clash between uh, two worlds um, on Phobos uh, using um, technology that was a lot uh, newer than uh, back in the nothing phase days uh, even though it was like uh, seven years or eight years after um, we with um, um, the high-tech high -tech weaponry is going really really fast and you, do you think that we are uh, slaves of high technology? Oh yeah, it's been a long time. Uh, nowadays, even more so um, with uh, cell phones and uh, it's um, and uh, the way there are algorithm um, directing what will appear on your screen of your the computer or uh, everything you click will lead to something that c is supposed to be connected and so on, and then you are sort of dictated what you're supposed to like and so in some sort of way yes uh, the world is sort of uh, manipulated through uh, computerized uh, formulas yeah. yeah and uh, what was the last chapter about did you have a concept for it, it uh, the last chapter was uh, uh, based on eric recovery from his accident uh, the accident we had uh, in germany uh, from like uh, not being able to move to fully uh, being fully mobile so it was a uh, sort of a metaphor for us to uh, awake the voivod again and make him victorious again <laughs> and, and uh, in uh, in that um, uh, that uh, uh, lost album uh, the voivod destroys his own creator his own god you know and uh, uh, so that's full on victory if you are able to uh, achieve that no masters no god uh, yeah to me anyway in my mind yeah and uh, do you think this voivod is a product of cold war paranoia maybe in some way yes of course uh, i'm not saying that it's nostalgic or um, wh uh, what i mean is like, it like uh, i mean we are definitely a product of uh, cold war and uh, in the 90s i was talking about nuclear weapons and people were telling me it's so uh, passé and uh, you know I mean, it, it, they're, they're still around i mean it's stupid exactly. so uh, pe people might use them so uh, now uh, it, it's um, it sounds maybe less like a product of cold war nowadays that now that nuclear weapons are back into the front line you know yeah. and uh, i realized uh, in 2000s uh, voivod's lyrics are more about uh, you know uh, oil uh, corporations in wars, and there is a song called uh, "Strange and Ironic," which is re which was released in 2006, I think. So, how do you feel about all this stuff going on around the world? It's really sad because um, you know um, 
it's such a recurring nightmare and uh, I'm less involved I'm less involved in writing the con the content uh, content of uh, the material now uh, snake is a uh, uh, taking care of the lyrics I uh, believe that one of the I believe that uh, part of the reasons why he left the band in 94 was that he couldn't really talk about what he really wanted to because I uh, had always had concepts and all that and uh, so when he came back into the band in 2008 um, well he actually came back before that uh, um, uh, like uh, it, uh, we came back when we reformed with Jason actually uh, and then we stopped again and when Piggy passed and then came back again in 2008 and so on but uh, I was um, less inclined to uh, dictate what should be what should be talked about uh, in the songs and uh, so uh, it's it's his uh, lyrics and we do throw ideas at him all the time though uh, all together um, so um, uh, it is um, a snake might be a little less sci-fi than than, uh, than me in his approach to uh, lyrics more maybe more street punk uh, uh, so uh, it's probably more direct um, yeah, but uh, he, I mean, he always, uh, it will always be a little, a little bit sci-fi, uh, but it's a bit different, yeah. yeah. And uh, was Voivod the first band that brought uh, gas masks as a part of the image, or... I mean, I frankly don't know any band in 1984 that had gas masks or stuff like that. I uh, think it might be the first nuclear imagery uh, in terms of uh, the singer wearing a gas mask and all that uh, probably yeah I think so and uh, when you look uh, now uh, in the eight, uh, when you take a look at the 80s uh, was it scarier uh, then or now in terms of nuclear weaponry and well I think it's scarier now yeah uh, because uh, the um, because of nanotechnology, uh, um, it's uh, easier to have uh, very long range uh, missiles, and uh, so um, I find that uh, it's totally out of control. Yeah. yeah. And uh, can you imagine thrash metal without Chernobyl explosion? I mean, in the eighties. Yes, because uh, we did it a little uh, before Chernobyl. Um, and Metallica did it, and uh, Iron Maiden. Iron Maiden. Exodus. <laughs> yeah, Exodus. Yeah, Iron Maiden. We didn't call them trash metal. We we called them heavy metal. But uh, trash metal was to us was more the Bay Area and uh, in uh, uh, like uh, Exodus and, uh, and but um, uh, Metallica and uh, but uh, also um, uh, in Europe, uh, Destruction, Creator. Yeah, and uh, Celtic Frost, and uh, so that was a little before uh, Chernobyl. Um, uh, Chernobyl was sort of uh, the peak. Uh, Chernobyl and the Challenger explosion and Regan Star Wars project. Yeah. Yeah, these were like the peak of uh, the the fear of uh, weapons uh, for me. Yeah, yeah. and, and uh, uh, of course, not to say that. Uh, nuclear plants or weapons but uh, it can become very disastrous if it explodes you know yeah, yeah and there is a song called our reaction on killing the technology album uh, and uh, it uh, has a reference uh, china syndrome yeah. so is, is it about uh, that uh, nuclear uh, power plant uh, accident in 1979 or well, it's actually uh, um, it's actually about uh, Chernobyl, uh, but um, uh, I did see the movie before *Chinese in Rome*, uh, which I loved, uh, with Jane Fonda, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a great, great movie. Yeah. Uh, and uh, are there some movies that uh, inspired uh, the whole Voivod thing? Yes, uh, there was a, a a movie called *The Day After*. It's scary. <laughs> it's really, really um, realistic in my my view and uh, and there were also movies like Blade Runner, Alien, Eraserhead, <coughs> Mad Max, um, Pink Floyd The Wall, um, many movies inspired me uh, art-wise and inspired the Voivod concept. And uh, speaking of art, uh, can you tell us something about your uh, art book? I mean, I just saw it. Oh, it, well it came out uh, a while back in English in 2009 and um, it starts in 76 maybe or uh, 
the book and uh, uh, ends in uh, around 2008-9 and just um, when uh, before we reformed I think and um, and now there is a German version. There'll be an Italian and French version eventually. Um, it's a limited edition, uh, so uh, once it's out of print, um, I'll, I'm working on two other books. So uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah but the problem is I saw a German one, and uh, it's too bad. I, I would have to translate everything. <laughs> I understand. I don't have English copies in Europe, unfortunately. I still have about 500 copies in Chicago in a warehouse. And they're in English. It's uh, this is available to uh, the official Voivod uh, merch, uh, Hi-Fi Entertainment. Uh, but um, uh, in Europe, there's only the German copy available uh, on tour. Um, too bad. Uh, and uh, is there? A, are you planning to record a documentary about Voivod or uh, a book about the band or something like that? There, w there is a. A, a movie, a documentary that we started with Sam Dunn, who did a bunch of movies about metal, um, like uh, Heavy Metal, A Headbanker's Journey, he did Global Metal, yeah. So he started something before he got really busy. Uh, we still need to uh, finish it, um, hopefully someday. Yeah, it's uh, just that we're so um, underground that uh, it's uh, <coughs> very costly. Yeah. And uh, what is like your favorite uh, artwork that you've done uh, while being in Voivod? Oh, probably the one I'm the most proud of is um, w the Warren Paint cover, mm -hmm. uh, be because um, I, um, it's my first painting, and I only did four paintings, and it's it, yeah, that's it, and uh, that's uh, after, after that I jumped to a digital art. But my real achievement is the first uh, Voivod album uh, cover, Warren Payne. Yeah, that's awesome. And uh, uh, there's uh, this uh, Negatron album cover with that ant. Uh, was that inspired by the movie Them from 1954, maybe? You know, these giant ants. <coughs> no, it was uh, actually a tribute to the first drawing I did when I was like four or five. It was Atom Ant. Uh, do you know Atom Ant? <laughs> it's the first drawing I did. And uh, it, it was my, my tribute to at, uh, the f Atom Ant in a way. Yeah, and uh, are you guys uh, pro environmental in a way? Most of the Voivod concept uh, is pro, uh, pro uh, like uh, anti pollution and all that. And uh, it comes from, uh, probably comes from Rush actually. And they had like a lot of uh, environment, uh, environmental messages through their uh, sci-fi tales, and um, uh, it really uh, influenced me. And of course, early distant warning, you know. Yeah. And even like, uh, I think they have a, a song called Trees or something, and uh, it's very much about that. And uh, um, uh, the, I think the uh, perfect uh, natural science or perfect, what's... Um, I think it's called Natural Science, maybe. Uh, there's a song on uh, um, the album Permanent Waves, uh, the last one. It's very, very uh, Voivodian, but it's because it influenced me, yeah. And uh, who is bigger influence, uh, Rush or King Crimson? Well, for me? And for the band? <laughs> for the band, it would probably be King Crimson because Robert Fripp was one of Piggy's uh, favorite guitar player, but for me my favorite band is uh, Van der Graaff Generator. That's my main influence. That's nice. Uh, and uh, since you, uh, how did you deal with the loss of Piggy? I mean, it was tough. Uh, Snake and I stopped for three years, and then <coughs> we uh, were able to finish the two albums we had started with uh, Jason, Catos, and Infini. But it took a lot of, uh, like, uh, it was hard not to have Piggy with us in the studio and only hearing him through the headphones. And so we did uh, 14 in 2006 and then Infini in 2009-ish. And uh, at one point we were finishing Infini with Jason while touring with Blackie. Uh, so uh, yeah, kind of yeah. And uh, was Voivod like the first band that brought uh, robotic voice in uh, heavy metal? I mean, I, I know Scenic, uh, Scenic did that or Fear Factory, but no one before them, I think. Maybe. It's, uh, I heard it from Frank Zappa with robotic vocals, but n uh, never in metal, you know? The, um, 
I, I had uh, only heard uh, robotic vocals on uh, Kraftwerk albums. Uh, that was about it. And are you a fan of Kraftwerk? Oh yeah, for uh, yeah yeah, I'm still a fan. Yeah, and they're awesome, and they have that song "Radioactivity." It's my favorite album, yeah, "Radioactivity." Uh, and have you heard the live version of uh, "Radioactivity" when they have these uh, signs uh, in the background, like? You should check it out. I mean, and they changed the lyrics, so it's even more powerful. Cool. I will check it out. Uh, and uh, what was Piggy like? I mean, uh, Just, uh, very humble, uh, very uh, solitary, and in a way, and uh, he just recorded music all day long with his headphones in his apartment, and um, yeah, super nice guy, very polite and reserved and. He's a nice fellow. Yeah, it's uh, it's very, really a shame what happened to him, and it happened very quick as well. Yeah, I mean, too bad. And uh, what is like your favorite moment with Peggy? Because I I couldn't find almost anything about him on the internet. Oh, I mean, him and I were a long time uh, together, playing, uh, writing, and playing music. So there were many great moments. I think um, maybe uh, touring with Fit No More in Sound Garden uh, in the 1990 was a great, great uh, moment. But I would say the tour with Rush in Canada uh, in the same year was probably uh, the best times we uh, the best time we had. Yeah. And uh, what is like the peak of your career? Well, in terms of uh, album sales, it was nothing face probably. Yeah. Yeah, but we also had a lot of exposure during uh, uh, the years with Jason. But the happiest time for me is now. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that uh, your uh, record sales are high now, yeah. higher than it's and higher than ever. Yeah, it's back to normal, and the shows are sold out. So it's back to a, a higher profile now. We sort of part of a legendary legacy, so um, people from all ages come to see us. And uh, what did the Angel Rat album mean to you? Because it's uh, completely different and it's uh, it's not part of these uh, five chapters, you know? No, we uh, we had a meeting uh, uh, after Nothing Face where we uh, tried to figure a way not to repeat ourselves and even though the company was waiting for Nothing Face Part 2, we wanted to do something totally different. That's why we hired Terry Brown. They had a different approach to our music and the lyrics as well. Yeah, so it was an experience. Not that many people liked it, but now, like it. <laughs> now it has become some people's favorite, Angel Rat. And uh, what's about the Outer Space album? That's Outer Limits, what? Outer Limits yeah. yeah. Um, it's the same deal where it's a continuation into the psychedelic uh, side of Voivod and we, uh, I think we, might, we even went further with Outer Limits uh, into psychedelia and um, uh, eventually we missed the hardcore roots and that's why we did Negatron after. And uh, who is Jack Luminous? Uh, Jack Luminous, um, it's the story of um, it's President XD and Jack Luminous are enemies and uh, President XD is sort of like an holo a hologram that is a perfect representation of what should be perfect. Uh -huh. <laughs> and so people follow him. But he's the evil one. He's a hologram. <laughs> and he's a holographic uh, dictator, sort of. And uh, Jack Luminous is like a monster, so everybody's scared of him, so they don't listen to him. But he's the one saying, don't listen to this guy. It's like Elephant Man, maybe. I mean, uh, it's exactly the case. And uh, so it's sort of like uh, President XD is um, um, uh, hypnotizing people through electronic devices like TV. Not like nowadays. Nowadays it would be a cell phone or a pad, you know? And uh, so people are just like uh, brainwashed, basically. And, yeah. uh, do you think that uh, you guys some, uh, predicted the future in some of your lyrics? Was that the case? A lot of it was based on scientific mag magazines like Discover and Omni magazine, and they were trying to predict the future. So it's kind of normal that 20, 25 years after the fact, some, some of the um, 
events happened, you know, even like the the huge particle uh, accelerator exists in Switzerland now, yeah. and that's what we were talking about in on Dimension Hatteras, and so uh, it's since uh, we were influenced by science, it's kind of normal that it came to happen. And uh, music-wise, what did the outer limits mean to you? I mean, or was it uh, like one? I, I think that's that's one of the greatest Voivod albums. Um, I don't know. I'm um, I'm proud of every album. So uh, this one is more of a studio experience, really. Uh, in LA at Record Plant, and uh, we spent a lot of money because MC had a lot of money to spend on us. So uh, we uh, w some people thought it was overproduced because we really went all out to make it sound amazing. Yeah. And uh, what about uh, Negatron? Since it's more uh, groovy and aggressive than the previous records, I think. Uh, when uh, when Snake left, uh, we were already P.G. and I heading into um, a heavier direction. We uh, we had already written Nano Man and um, and then, uh, but uh, Snake wanted to do something else with his life and uh, didn't want to do that music anymore. And uh, so um, that's where we became a power trio with Eric. It's another approach. Eric was um, influenced by Sepultura, and so the so it's a, a different uh, way of seeing music. And, uh, was uh, Phobos uh, kind of con uh, more connected with the Negatron in terms of music, or uh yes. uh, well, Phobos is also like a dimension hat for us of uh, the nineties to us. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, <coughs> Did you used to know uh, Steve Hurdle of Gorgots? Yeah, yeah, the Gorgots are good friends. And uh, what was he like? When did you meet him first time? I didn't really have any uh, relationship with him uh, in terms of our friendship, I mean, you know. Um, but uh, Chewie uh, knows him, uh, knew him a lot better than uh, because he was he played in Gorgots. Uh, he played in Gorgots, so, um, uh, so I, I'm, um, I'm not super familiar with the guys in the band, but of course, I, uh, Gorgots, uh, Cataclysm, uh, uh, these are like... Uh, uh, household names in uh, Montreal, you know, like, yeah. yeah. And are you a fan of Dan's uh, band Martyr? Yeah, yeah, it's a very complicated music, yeah. And uh, how did the uh, uh, Canadian male scene look like back in the 80s? Well, it was mainly speed metal, Razor, Exciter, Anvil, so... Um, um, I think we were pretty much the first ones to play trash metal in Canada. Um, but then, soon after us, there were tons of bands, DBC and Damnation, Aggression, and, um, so... Sacrifice. Sacrifice, great band, yeah. And so, um, uh, there was no trash metal when we started. Um, it's just, we had hardcore roots as much as New Wave or British Heavy Metal, so that's how we became trash metal. Really. And I forgot to ask you, uh, was this nuclear scare present uh, back in Canada in the 80s, or you just want... Yeah, it was present everywhere. There are lots of uh, stockpiles of nuclear weapons uh, in USA. They are our closest neighbors. So, uh, yeah, I was always scared of and, that. And uh, what about the nuclear waste in uh, Montreal? Was there any uh, power plants around? That there was only one in the province of Quebec, and it was shut down a long, long time ago. Uh, because do, you, do you know the year, maybe? or was I think we... It didn't last long. Uh, people protested, and uh, it didn't. Uh, early 70s, I think. Uh, oh. It only lasted a couple of years. And uh, but uh, because in Quebec we have tons and tons of uh, water, so it's all uh, electric uh, from electricity from uh, dams. You know, yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, did I, I saw a picture of Lemmy with a Voivod shirt. I, I maybe never saw him uh, with uh, some band shirts that he was wearing. So uh, did that mean a lot to you? Yeah, Piggy gave him the shirt, uh, I think it was 85 in Montreal, and he wore it the next day at a uh, uh, yeah, New York photo shoot in a hotel room with Jack Daniels, mirror shades, cigarettes, and a deck of cards, and it's perfect photo to me. I still have it. Uh, it's a center fold of a magazine, and I, uh, I still have the original. I'm very proud of that. And uh, he was probably one of the biggest influence on Voivod, right? 
water head for sure. I copied Filthy, Snake copied Lemmy, Blackie copied Lemmy, you know? Yeah, Piggy copied uh, Fast Eddie Clark. At first Piggy was called Fast Piggy. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that. And uh, what is your favorite Motorhead album? Oh, it's Ace of Spades, yeah, yeah. I think it's mediocre when compared with both stuff from 70s and 80s and 90s. I don't know why, but... Uh, I don't know It's uh, where it really uh, clicked for me. And uh, it, it, uh, it, it really was the first trash album uh, in my mind. But uh, um, And uh, I have a special spot for uh, No Sleep Till I'm a Smith because I went to see the show in Montreal. I hitchhiked a, a long way to, uh, to see the show. I think there is a live in Toronto in, uh, from 1982 or something like that. Maybe, I don't know. And now let's get back to the a few, uh, present. Uh, how did uh, Dan Mungrain join the band? Oh, it's just in 2008. We were asked to do a show, a heavy Montreal a festival, a big festival with Iron Maiden and Motley Crue. And uh, it was only for one show. We asked Blackie and Dan and Ch uh, Chewy. And, uh, but uh, the word spread and then we were asked to play with Judas Reese and Ozzy in Calgary, Canada. And then we were asked to play with Testament in uh, Tokyo. It just kept going and we, n we never stopped. Yeah. And uh, uh, are, were you super excited when he uh, joined the band and, uh, when you started recording the Target Earth album? Was it, uh, what was that experience like? I mean, it was a great experience. Um, uh, we had already toured uh, a few years, like four or five years, uh, when we decided to go into the studio. So the, the, the band was a very tight unit and it was uh, fairly easy and uh, great times, yeah. Uh, and uh, he managed to mimic the piggy sound, which is cool. Yeah, well, I don't know if he, it's a copy of it, but he learned to play on uh, Voivod, so... It's really, it really shows, and he also tried to uh, intentionally keep the spirit of Voivod intact. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. And uh, what is the idea behind uh, post-society lyric-wise? It's uh, pretty much, uh, it's kind of useless now to try to speak about sci-fi. You just need to speak about what's going on right now. And it is sci-fi. So it's very much about what's going on right now. Again, Snake is more down to earth than I am. Um, uh, except that for the next album, we're trying to, uh, to be more exploratory uh, lyric-wise. But um, uh, Post Society is very uh, representative of the world we live in right now. Can you tell us something about the new album? It's, it's a long album. The songs are very long and very complicated, except for one that's a shorter rocker, but uh, it's a long concept album that's uh, progressive trash and uh, very intricate. And, uh, is that the seventh chapter or not? Uh, is that the seventh chapter? No, the, I don't think we'll ever uh, re-record the seventh chapter because uh, it's, it was Eric, with Eric Forrest and Piggy, and uh, we do have a demo that uh, we might release someday, but uh, um, no, it's, it's not part of the Voivod concept. I mean, too bad that you didn't release that seventh chapter. And uh, what is the name of the new album? Do you have some information? or We don't have a title yet. Um, even the songs, we only have working titles. And it, we're still working on that. Snake is still writing the lyrics in, uh, in the bus and backstage. <laughs> That's awesome. So, do you have uh, any last words for the fans here in Serbia? Yeah, and uh, I mean, we're so glad we are finally here. And uh, also, we want to thank um, the fans from all around the world for being so loyal and supportive for 34 years now. It's really the reasons why uh, the reason why we keep going. Thank you so much, man. Thanks a lot. <laughs>